Yo, what's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome into the Bulls Report. My name is Patrick Seatman. We got a big-time injury update around Kobe White coming in from Woj. He tweeted this out about 10 minutes ago. Following Kobe White, a scary fall he had against the Pacers last night, where personally I thought he could have possibly tore his groin, but we got a positive, positive injury update here. As he says, Kobe White's MRI revealed a mild hip strain, and he could return to the lineup as soon as Saturday versus the Wizards, which is obviously big time and just great news for Chicago because I was definitely a little nervous that Kobe White could have went down for, you know, maybe at least a month or maybe a month or two, you know, with that injury. But turns out positive news, MRI came back clean. So it looks like the most improved player candidate Kobe White will be returning as soon as Saturday versus the Wizards. Would have liked to have him, obviously, tonight versus the Los Angeles Clippers because, you know, I'm not saying this is like a big-time revenge game for Chicago, but, you know, they had the Clippers when they faced him in L.A. about a week ago, and then obviously the second half did not go the Bulls' way. But let's start off today's show by showing the most improved player in the NBA this season. Kobe White, some love. Type his jersey number down below in the comment section. I want to see it flooded with zeros as Kobe White avoids a pretty big-time injury here, and it's just a mild hip strain. But coming up on today's show, I'm going to be diving into the Bulls-Pacers game a little bit more in depth and really talking about DeMar DeRozan because as it stands right now, he is the favorite to win clutch player of the year. But let's dive into the game from last night. Is It was probably just the most typical Chicago Bulls get basketball game uh, we've seen this season. We know we've been calling them the cardiac kids for a reason, and that was a great example last night. But DeMar DeRozan in 44 minutes last night had 46 points, 12 of 24 from the field, one of six from downtown, but that one three he hit at the end of regulation in that corner was obviously a big time shot to tie the game up at 117. But kind of the biggest takeaway I had from this game was the Bulls starters played their ass off. I mean, just looking at some of these plus minuses from last night, DeMar DeRozan plus 18, Nikola Vucevic, a game high plus 23, Alex Cruz also had a plus 24, and then guys on the Bulls bench, um, you know, they were obviously in the negative because this was a close game, but we had Daylon Terry at a minus 7, Julian Phillips at a minus 8, Torrey Craig at a minus 12, my man OB at a minus 9, and then Drummond was actually a minus 18, but I do just want to talk about DeMar here for a little bit, and I got to admit, I was completely wrong about DeMar DeRozan. I made a video, it was probably about a month ago at this point, where I was saying I would rather have Kobe White and Io DeSumo start closing these games. And I made the point where it's was like, yes, DeMar DeRozan is a better closer right now as it stands in the NBA, but I would have rather had those late game reps when the game is close and it's clutch time basketball going to a guy like Kobe White and Al DeSumo just to get them the reps moving forward. Well, DeMar DeRozan, I was completely wrong. Uh, you have been absolutely on a heater as of lately. You know, the West, Co uh, the West Coast trip, he closed that game versus the Warriors. He closed that game versus Sacramento Kings and also the Utah Jazz he was fantastic. Struggled down the stretch versus the Clippers, but overall, DeMar DeRozan over the past couple of weeks has been fantastic. And, you know, this thing about a little broader scope here, just around the NBA, you know, we heard DeMar, you know, his name was thrown in a ton of trade rumors when the NBA trade deadline was coming around. And I'm just thinking about other teams who maybe didn't want to pull the trigger on a DeMar DeRozan trade and not going kind of all in on him. Maybe they thought he was you know, a little bit past his prime. I'm just imagining one of those teams, like the Knicks, for example, if they would have traded for a guy like DeMar DeRozan, like where they would have been, you know, with a guy like him on their roster. But again, DeMar DeRozan last night was just special, man. He was he was incredible closing the game, especially in that overtime period. And the thing I love most about DeMar DeRozan's game, um, his ability to get to the free throw line is is special. Like, I, you know, it drives me crazy sometimes when he gets to that mid range spot and he's just pump faking, pump faking, pump faking. But he is so good at getting the defender's hand stuck in the co cookie jar. If you put your hand on DeMar DeRozan's hip and he's working in that mid-range, you obviously got to be very careful because you got to kind of pick your poison there. It's like if I get a good contest on DeMar, there's a chance he's going to kind of sweep through and get my arm cut uh, caught in there and then he's going to the line and shooting too. But if I don't contest that jump shot and he's just seeing back iron, he shoots that shot probably better than anybody in the National Basketball Association. So DeMar DeRozan, you were absolutely hooping last night. You've been hooping for the last 
two weeks. So just wanted to kind of give him his flowers. And, you know, I do really believe he is the most clutch player in the NBA as it stands right now. And kind of taking this to a potential play-in tournament matchup because the Bulls will most likely get the Atlanta Hawks in that first playing game in that 9-10 matchup. And I think the Bulls will be able to handle them with Trey Young out of the lineup right now due to the injury. Don't really know when he is supposed to come back right now, but we know what Caruso, we know what Ayo DeSumo has done to um, to Trey Young in his career. They put him in handcuffs. They've really gotten the best of him. So I expect the Bulls to win that game. And then let's just say it's the Miami Heat. The Indiana Pacers in that 9-8 matchup fighting for that last playoff spot. Like, if that game's close down the stretch of these games and it's a less than five-point game with five minutes left, I'm probably riding with the Chicago Bulls in that matchup. I mean, we saw it last night. I think, obviously, Tyrese Halliburton is a better player overall right now than DeMar DeRozan. But in the last five minutes of basketball game, when you just need to throw the ball to a guy and it's clear out, flatten out, go get yourself a bucket... DeMar DeRozan's on a short list in the NBA on guys I would have had. So DeMar DeRozan, credit to you. Just want to give you some flowers here. But more about that game. Another guy who (laughs) absolutely played his ass off last night. Probably the best game we've seen from Alex Caruso this season. He had 23 points, 7 rebounds, 7 assists on 9 of 13 shooting, knocking down 5 of 6 of his threes from downtown. If you're getting that offensive production, from Alex Crusoe, and you combine that with what he did on Tyrese Halliburton last night, the dude's special. Tyrese Halliburton, imagine this. He had 17 points. He was a game low, minus 22 in the plus minus department, 6 of 13, 1 of uh, one of 6 from downtown. Obviously did have um, uh, 14 assists. Yes, 14 assists. So or 14 assists, which was a game high as well. But Caruso, I thought he did a number on him. Um, when Tyrese Halliburton was running off a uh, screen at the end of the game to uh, try to hit a game winner, Caruso was just hounding him, fighting over screens, was able to get a really solid contest on him where Halliburton kind of had the double pump fake, and he obviously shanked the jump shot. So I think this was a big-time win for the Bulls. You kind of prove to yourself in that own locker room where if it's like, if we are in that playoffs or playing scenario where it's a nine versus eight and we do have the Indiana Pacers, I honestly think the Bulls have the advantage in that game because of what you're able to do to Tyrese Halliburton with Crusoe, with Io DeSumo. And in the end of these games, the ability to give the ball to DeMar DeRozan and just say, go get us a bucket. I got more faith in him. Honestly, I got 10 times more faith in him in going and delivering in that spot in comparison to obviously Tyrese Halliburton. But um, Kobe White last night, he was struggling. He couldn't really get that little push shot, a little push, a little layup floater shot that he always takes off the backboard when he's coming downhill off that screen. He was 6 of 17 last night. Wasn't his best game, but um, positive news on his standpoint that he was able to um, you know, avoid major injury. MRI came back clean. So we're going to see Kobe White playing the rest of the year. Hopefully he's back Saturday versus the Wizards because those games versus the Wizards. They got two of them left. I think they have another game versus the Pistons still remaining on their schedule where those are must-win games for Chicago. And obviously great news here that Kobe White will be playing with the Bulls down the stretch. But overall, Bulls have been playing good basketball over the last two weeks. I know, you know, they're still 32 and 34, and I get it. You could be negative about this Bulls team and just saying, you know, once again, we're middle of the pack. You know, we're not good enough to contend for championships. We're not bad enough to get a top 10 pick in this year's draft class. All I would have to say to you guys saying that, just enjoy the ride. Go enjoy what this Bulls team is putting out there because they play their ass off every single night. I want to also give credit to Billy Donovan. You know, losing Zach Levine, Patrick Williams for the entire year, just the injuries and the ups and downs of this season that the Bulls are floating around 500. And they're only three games back from the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat with Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Terry Rozier, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, Spolstra, Pat Riley, all those guys in Miami, the Bulls are only three games back from that eight spot. So hopefully they can get hot down here the, uh, down the stretch of the season, and hopefully Kobe White will be fully ready to go once playing time comes around. But Kobe White avoids major injury with that MRI. Shout out to him. Great news on that standpoint. And then DeMar DeRozan, man, continue proving me wrong. You are an absolute bucket. I just, uh, you know, I feel like an idiot. I'm not going to lie. I feel like an idiot saying he shouldn't close games, but he definitely proved me wrong. So shout out to him. He's just been absolutely balling out, and he should win Clutch Player of the Year 
this season in the NBA. But guys, make sure you guys are subscribed here to the channel. If we get any more injury updates around Kobe White, even though it is looking in the positive direction here, we'll make a video for you guys ASAP. Thank you guys so much. For, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, see y'all next time. Go Bulls.